Hassan Hussein. I am an assistant professor at uh, the Department of Ophthalmology and Visual Sciences in Dalhousie in Nova Scotia, in, uh, in, in Halifax, Nova Scotia. And I will be discussing with you uh, orbital lymphoma. So, orbital lymphoma uh, is a rare presentation of extranodal non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Uh, so non-Hodgkin's lymphoma is typically the, the type of lesions that we see in the conjunctiva and orbit. Uh, lymphomas form the largest group of the lympho lymphoproliferative disorders that we see in the orbit. So I'll come back to this picture in a moment, but approximately 55% of orbital malignant tumors are lymphomas. Uh, around 75% of orbital lymphomas are unilateral. Um, and around just over half are isolated lesions, but the other uh, uh, proportion have some evidence of systemic disease. Therefore, if up to half, patient, half of patients could actually have non-diagnosed systemic disease, uh, it is important that all your patients who you diagnose orbital or ocular lymphoma are referred for uh, an, on to an oncology opinion to uh, ensure that they have no systemic findings. And the presentation of lymphoma is very variable. It can be localized, it can be diffuse, it can infiltrate the lacrimal gland, the extraocular muscles, it can be a, a, a mass just on its own uh, in a subcutaneous region under the, uh, under the eyelids. So it can be tricky to diagnose. And one thing I would say to you uh, if you're a resident starting your training, is always, always uh, check the fornices. So pull the lower lid away from the globe, check the deep fornix, evert the upper eyelid, make sure you're happy with the fornices. You may have a very subtle lesion sitting there, such as a um, salmon patch, like in this uh, lady who I saw recently, uh, who was referred for some, just some periorbital swelling she'd noticed. Uh, the optometrist said, you know, is this some uh, idiopathic orbital inflammation or some sort of thyroid issue? But when I pulled her lower lid away, I saw this pinkish lesion sitting there. And in fact, she had another one in the upper uh, fornix as well. So a patient with, uh, we'll come to the types of lymphoma in a moment and how they present. But really in your history, uh, lymphoma typically aff affects patients who are over the age of 50. They present with gradual painless proptosis. Um, and typically, uh, and more commonly, the lesion is anterior in the orbit and can be felt and palpated. It's usually firm and rubbery to palpation with no overlying uh, skin change. Um, the lacrimal gland can be involved and of course can be enlarged and you could probably feel that. If it's a conjunctiva, like in this patient, a salmon pink patch appearance, which is classical, and, but be aware that this may be an extension of uh, orbital or intraocular lymphoma. So you will need to do imaging always in these patients. I would always do a CT scan first because you need to assess the bone well and make sure, excuse me, that there's no bony destruction. And of course, these patients are going to, have to end up having uh, a biopsy. And always try to do the biopsy from the area that you can get the most tissue so in this patient, you might say, well, you know, could we just biopsy that salmon patch? You could. However, when I imaged her, she had a fairly more, um, uh, uh, a larger patch in the medial orbit. So we did an upper lid crease approach to that uh, mass and we got a really good um, uh, amount of tissue for the pathologist. The more tissue you give your pathologist, the more helpful they're gonna be. So if you give them a, a sort of friable pieces of tissue, they're just gonna say non-specific changes and you'll just be stuck with no diagnosis. So in the end, it helps you, it helps the patient and it helps you. Um, the patient will really need investigation. So I said to you about imaging, but consider um, you, may, you must do a dilated fundoscopy. You have to do an FBC, a biochemistry profile, liver function tests. You'll have to get the oncologist and they'll probably do that, do a, a CT of the abdomen, thorax and pelvis. Uh, they might have to do a bone marrow aspiration or PET scanning, but really I would leave that up to the um, uh, oncologist. So the commonest types, these are the four most common types. The, the number one uh, type we see is the EMZL. Uh, these are all the B-cell uh, uh, lymphomas. 
Um, but you can also get rarely a T-cell lymphoma or a natural killer cell lymphoma. They are much rarer. But the extranodal marginal zone is definitely the most common. And the prognosis is usually good, um, depending on uh, how sensitive that uh, tumor is. And that also comes down to its pathological and cytological characteristics. And as you most of you will know, radiotherapy is the well-established treatment modality for lymphomas. They are markedly radiosensitive. Primary chemotherapy has minimal efficacy in low-grade lymphoma, and therefore it's not really the first-line treatment. And these days with proton beam and very focused radiation, uh, that can be given in the orbit with very, very minimal uh, risk to the uh, uh, eye itself. Uh, conjunctival lymphoma, I should tell you, is known to have the lowest rate of extraorbital spread and lymphoma-related death. So in a patient who just has uh, a conjunctival lesion with no orbital involvement, you can tell them quite safely that this is, you know, it'll respond well to radiation and it should hopefully not spread. Be aware there are other differentials such as um, uh, uh, lymphatic proliferation and lymphoproliferation. Uh, that is a differential in lymphoma. And I had a patient who um, we thought had a lymphoma uh, on the conjunctiva. I did a biopsy and actually the biopsy caused some inflammation locally and the rest of the lesion just melted away. And the pathology just came back as some uh, 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 lymphatic pro pro proliferation with no evidence of malignancy. Um, now, I don't have any imaging for you, but um, you know, in terms of the uh, presentation, like I said to you, these are usually well-defined uh, homogeneous masses in a part of the orbit, uh, usually anterior or in the lacrimal gland. They, do, they uh, grow very slowly and don't infiltrate tissue. They cause a proptosis if they're large enough, but in the early stages, uh, they're very subtle in terms of diagnosis. And a patient may just present with just some fullness and some periorbital swelling. Um, uh, so it can be very subtle. And uh, the prognosis is usually very good with treatment. Um, and that's the end of that case. I had a quick question about um, the role of debulking. So if you yeah. are in the orbit already in the OR getting a biopsy, mm -hmm. um, sometimes it's tempting to try to debulk as much as yeah. you can. Do you try to avoid that um, for the risk of damage to adjacent tissue or do you still try to debulk uh, as safely as possible? That's a really, really good question. I, I don't know if anyone's done any studies on that as such. So I, you know, my answer is not gonna be really evidence-based. Um, but you could argue that, you know, if you're reducing the mass of the, uh, the uh, structure by debulking, if anything, that's going to help the patient in terms of, you know, once, once they have radiotherapy, it's less tissue for, that's going to have to respond to, to the management. But with a caveat, of course, that if you're near critical structures, don't go nuts and, uh, you know, uh, Hippocr you know Hippocratic, the Hippocratic oath is first do no damage, right? So don't, uh, do more than you think is necessary. But, you know, for example, in patients who have um, idiopathic orbital inflammation, I do know that um, debulking or reducing the disease burden, as I would say, um, does mean that some of them have had better uh, responses to um, systemic treatment like um, uh, immunotherapy or immunomodulators from the uh, rheumatologist. So I would say, you know, I would say Try to safely take as much as you can. Your priority is to get a very good piece of tissue for the pathologist. If secondarily you can debulk safely, go ahead, but don't take any risks. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Awesome. So we've got one more.